Are consoles becoming irrelevant in modern gaming? With the release of the new Xbox Series X and the PS5, I find myself constantly asking this question more and more often. And if you're watching this video, I'm pretty sure you're asking the same question too. To me, the appeal of a console is an affordable entry into the gaming industry. However, just looking at the new releases begs the question of whether that's truly the case anymore. Now, I just want to make this clear before we go any further. I am an Xbox gamer, I have been one since 2013, and I actually do not own a gaming PC. Actually, since I'm a gaming channel, I play games pretty much every day for up to three hours a day. Some would consider that unhealthy, and at times, I'm inclined to agree. But I have not played or even booted up my Xbox One in about two weeks, which is a pretty decent chunk of time for a gamer that used to play every day for hours. The reason? Well, I'm going to be honest, I've been on my PC instead. Now, I don't want to end up turning this video into a console versus PC debate, but I kind of feel like I have to. So without further ado, let's go a little deeper and look at the specific arguments. But before we go any further, it would not be a proper YouTube video if I did not beg you. So, if you end up enjoying this video, then please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We are on that road to 200 subs, and I need your help to make sure we get there. Now I'm not a specs kind of guy, so instead I talked to some people who are. I have a few friends who actually do computer science and have quite a fair bit of experience in coding and PC building. They told me that, uh, for the price, the new gen consoles are very affordable in terms of specs, and that consoles are slowly but surely catching up to PCs in terms of what's inside. All of this sounds very good for consoles, and in fairness, it is. Now again, as I said, I'm not that much of a specs guy, so I do apologise if this segment is not as in-depth as you would like, but I have linked a video discussing PC specs and comparing them to consoles in the description down below that I think explains my point better than I can. That being said, I'm fairly certain that for the price of $500, you can get a pretty decent PC that will last you a lot longer than any console, especially when considering the variety and availability of PC parts. To even further stack the odds against consoles, PCs don't have to be used for gaming. A good PC will be useful in general, whether it be for work or for leisure. So to conclude, I'd say that despite the fact that consoles are catching up to PC in specs, PCs are still superior. But then again, as I said, I'm not a specs guy, so do with this information what you will. Overall, I think we can all agree that the gaming industry is pretty much dominated by Microsoft and Sony. Whilst new consoles like the Nintendo Switch and, Jesus Christ, the KF console do come out every now and again, I don't think it's even up for question that the gaming console market is pretty much held at gunpoint by these two major companies, in a similar manner that Google holds the video sharing industry at gunpoint with YouTube. Sure, you get competitors every now and again, rip story fire. But overall, Google knows it's the market dominator in the same way that Microsoft and Sony know that they are. On the other hand, the PC gaming market holds far more variety, with lots of different brands and companies making different builds and components. The PC market is overall far more diverse and has so much more variety than the console market. When building a PC, you have so many options to choose from and you can genuinely make your PC your own. And that holds a lot of appeal, especially for people like me that enjoy a little bit of uniqueness. Now I'm going to have to give it to consoles here, they still do retain great ease of use and are very user friendly. The idea of building a PC may seem incredibly daunting and scary to some, especially when that idea comes attached with a pretty hefty price tag. It just seems like the easier option to buy a console and have everything ready to go, and in fairness, it is. But if you're ready to invest $500 into a gaming machine, then you need to know what you're buying and how to make the most out of your money. And as we will talk about later in the price section of the video, PCs are simply more value for money. So whilst consoles still do retain their ease of use and simplistic appeal, for gamers that want the best value for money, a PC will still likely be the better option. PC has more variety for games. That's simply final. There are so many games available on Steam, on Epic Games, on Blizzard, or even on specific websites like, for example, the way you download World of Tanks. Steam has one of the biggest game libraries with an incredible number of options and variety. For example, there's some games on PC you simply cannot find on console, such as Geometry Dash or Among Us. Not to mention the games you can find have the benefit of mods and easier updates, such as Minecraft. Minecraft on PC is simply superior to console Minecraft in every way, and the same goes for a lot of other games. We now live in a society where you can play Halo, an Xbox exclusive, on a PC with a PS4 controller plugged in. That should say everything that needs to be said. If you're interested in playing games, then PC is the clear winner here. And if you don't like a mouse and keyboard, then what's stopping you from plugging something else in? 
Now we have moved on to the part of the video that is going to be the most controversial, and that is because whenever PCs are brought up, people always say, well, I don't feel like spending $3,000 to play Call of Duty. But that's simply not true. There's this strange stigma around PC gaming where people seem to believe that unless you spaff three years saving into a gaming behemoth, your PC's gaming potential will be forever stunted at Balloons Monkey City. Yes, PCs can be expensive, but let's face it, consoles are no longer cheap too. The new Series X and PS5 are retailing for about $450, and that's excluding the price of the inevitable spare controller you will buy, which may I remind you are ridiculously overpriced. For $500, you can get a pretty decent PC that will run the same as your games console will run, though maybe not at the same graphics. But that small sacrifice you make enters you into a whole new realm of possibilities, because now you aren't stuck with the same console that will inevitably be replaced in 5 years. You are stuck with a machine that can grow with you, and that you can keep by your side for the next decade and a half. As we already mentioned in the specs and variety segment, PCs are easy to upgrade and have lots of parts available at a lot of different price ranges, meaning that whilst everyone else is stuck in the same spot until the new console releases, you can upgrade at your own pace, or heck, even not upgrade at all. In conclusion, I think I made it clear in this video that PCs are simply superior to consoles in almost every way. However, I doubt that was something most of you didn't know. So instead, let me answer the question I posed at the start on whether consoles are becoming irrelevant. Consoles have been behind PCs for an extremely long time both in specs, variety, price, and games. So one must ask the question, why do people even bother buying them? Well, it's because of a bond. It's because a decade ago, consoles were different. A decade ago, no one cared about graphics, or FPS, or the resolution. A decade ago, you had games like Halo that brought people together through split screen. The main goal of consoles wasn't to provide the best gaming experience, it was to bring people together on a couch and let them have fun playing games. Over recent years, that's a trait that consoles have slowly begun to lose, and to people paying close attention, you'll have noticed what's happening a while ago. Consoles are catching up to PCs. The new gen consoles have some pretty good specs for the price, but I'm not saying that as a positive. Consoles have become so obsessed with beating PCs that they've lost everything that made them unique and special to begin with. Consoles are slowly becoming PCs, and to me, that's the reason they're becoming irrelevant. Thank you all very much for watching this video. Again, if you did enjoy, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more gaming-related content. I will be here next Saturday. The question is, will you? My name is Bitalaric. Have a good one. I am an Xbox gamer.